Hey everybody, uh, bust out those binders because it's time for Muggs' MK Classroom. Yep, Professor Muggs is back with an all new lesson. And this time, we are talking NISPs. Let's jump right in. So the first question is, what is a NISC? Well, NISC is an acronym and it simply means no item shortcut. A uh, shortcut is, of course, any path you can drive on that is quicker to take than the standard uh, or intended driving path. These may include simply taking trickier sections of the course, like these two ribbon road shortcuts, cutting through off-road with a mushroom or star, or even jumping from one part of the track to another, like this well-known rainbow road shortcut, uh, which is actually a NISC, since it is a shortcut you can take without an item. Many shortcuts are seemingly designed to require a boost item, like a mushroom or, or a star, say, so you can drive through off-road without losing speed. However, it is often the case that, with some clever maneuvering, one can still take advantage of these shortcuts without any item at all. These are also examples of no-item shortcuts or NISCs, and they are what I want to focus on for this lesson series. Some NISCs aren't too bad to pull off, while others are a true test of driving skill. But don't worry, I'm gonna break this lesson into multiple pieces, and I'm gonna try to do so in such a way that we tackle the easy NISCs first. If you go through these videos chronologically, then my hope is that you will build up your skills with each NISC conquered. Uh, you see, while each NISC is unique, many of the same tools are used from NISC to NISC. Several general skills that will be useful in performing many NISCs are one, the ability to build slash release mini turbos during a drift and off-road. Two, alignment hopping. Three, neutral drifting. And four, soft drifting. Learning these four skills, you can then combine them in specific ways to perform multiple NISCs. If you do not know what all of these techniques are, don't worry about that either. I'll address them as they come up. Uh, but for this video, I only want to focus on the first two skills I mentioned. That is, the ability to build slash release mini turbos while drifting and off-road, and alignment hopping. These will be the two skills needed to conquer the NISC I will show in this video, which is the Thwomp Ruins 150cc beginning NISC. So let's uh, first introduce the shortcut, and let's first do so with a mushroom. You've probably noticed this ramp in the grass right at the beginning of Thwomp Ruins. To take it with a boost item is simple enough, as seen here. But what if we don't have any item? Like say right at the beginning of the race? Can we still take this cut and save some time in doing so? Well, the answers are yes and yes. And to see how, let's first discuss building up mini turbos in off-road. So as you likely know, if you press and hold one of the R buttons and then turn right or left, your character will enter into a drift. Once in a drift, we stay drifting until we release that R button, and if we have been drifting for long enough, then we can build up what are called mini turbos. The three levels of mini turbo are 1. Mini turbo, a small blue boost. 2. Super mini turbo, a medium yellow boost. And 3. The ultra mini turbo, the large purple boost. The longer we drift, the more powerful our mini turbos become. And the rate at which the turbos charge up depends on two things. Your character uh, and cart setup, so your build, and the position the left joystick is in. Let's just quickly tackle build first. Generally, small and light characters build mini turbos quicker, while heavy characters will build them slower. Also, a vehicle like the Biddy Buggy or Mr. S Mr. Scooty, say, with roller tires will build up mini turbos very quickly, while bigger, bulkier builds uh, and carts tend to accumulate mini turbos slower. Uh, you could easily make a, an, a whole 20 minute video on the Mario Kart 8 meta alone, but that is not the intention of this video. So for our purposes here, we're just gonna focus on two builds. The first will be Toadette and the Biddy Buggy with roller tires and paper glider, and the second will be Wario and the Wiggler with roller tires and paper glider. The former build will allow us to charge mini turbos very quickly, while the latter build is slower at charging mini turbos. 
Uh, there are, of course, even slower charging builds out there. But I think if you can pull off this shortcut here and the shortcuts in my series here with Wario and a Wiggler, then you're doing pretty well. That being said, you can always try different NISCs with different builds to put your skills to the test. So like I said, the other factor that impacts the rate our mini turbos charge is the position of our left joystick. The mini turbo will charge quickest when we have our joystick within 30 degrees of a hard drift, where a hard drift is when we hold the stick 90 degrees in the direction we are turning, either left or right. When the joystick is in any other position aside from within 30 degrees of a hard drift, the mini turbo will charge slowest. However, for this first NIST, we don't need to get too into the weeds here, uh, so I'll go more in depth here in my next lesson, but for now, all we need to realize is that the mini turbo charges at two rates, and that holding the stick about 90 degrees in the direction we are turning will charge it at the faster of the two rates. Okay, so now that we better understand the very basics of drifting and charging mini turbos, we can discuss doing so in the off-road. Off-road portions of the course are areas where your cart moves more slowly, and they're usually indicated by grass, dirt, or something else to distinguish it from the main road that we're meant to drive on. You may have noted that if you drift through off-road, it won't take long before you lose your mini turbos. Since the off-road slows us down, after a bit of time driving off-road, we aren't moving fast enough to charge mini turbos, so we stop building them up and actually lose whatever we have already built up. However, this effect is not instantaneous. Note there is still a bit of time in which I can drive through off-road and still have my mini turbos charged, as indicated by the colored sparks emitting from the cart. If we release our drift during this time, we will still get the mini turbo even while on off-road. And, and now, of course, while driving through off-road, the boost from the mini turbo will also be diminished, but we will still get a noticeable gain in speed. In fact, the turbo will last the same amount of time as it would if we were on the main road, even though we may not cover as much distance as normal since the off-road is slowing us down. While releasing a level 1 blue mini turbo in off-road may not be of much help, if we can charge up to a second level super mini turbo or a third level ultra mini turbo, things can change. One big reason why is because, like I said, a turbo released in off-road will last the same amount of time as one released on-road. So if we release, say, a super mini turbo in the off-road, and then we quickly get our cart back onto the main road, we can still get the full boost effects of the super mini turbo and reach our top on-road speed. Hopping here could also be a helpful factor, because while your cart is airborne, it will not be slowed down by the off-road, so if you have a turbo boost released and start hopping, you will move a bit faster than if you weren't hopping. The most difficult part here is simply getting the feel for how long you can charge up a mini turbo in the off-road before it goes away. Uh, again, this will depend on your character and cart build, I suggest starting with a baby character or toadette in a bitty buggy and simply practicing. See how long you can drift through off-road while still accumulating your mini turbos. You will surely have some attempts where you release the drift button a hair too late and get no boost, but after even just a little bit of practice, I am certain that you will get a feel for how long you can drift through off-road without losing your mini turbo. And once you have that feel down, you are almost ready to tackle this first NISC. Uh, but first, we have to discuss alignment hopping. Uh, alignment hopping is exactly what it sounds like. It is when you use hopping to realign your cart how you want it. When airborne, your cart cannot change momentum. That is, you have brief periods where you cannot change your driving direction even if you tilt the stick. However, you can, I repeat, you can rotate your cart while airborne, even though it will keep moving in the same direction. So, keeping this in mind, you can utilize hopping to discreetly change your driving direction, which you can do by simply hopping, uh, using the left stick uh, to rotate the cart left or right while in the air, and then once you land, let go of the stick. You will now be driving in the new direction your cart is facing, without having had to turn continuously into that, into that direction. Turning while the cart is on the ground like that would actually cause some deceleration, but hopping reduces this deceleration. Thus, you can use hopping to more quickly and discreetly change your driving line without deceleration. This is alignment hopping, guys. Okay, 
So far, we've discussed how to release mini turbos in off-road as well as alignment hopping, but we still haven't tackled this Thwomp Ruins NISC yet. Well, we finally have all the tools we need to do so, so let's NISC it up. So, we will first approach it as if the race was just beginning, say like an online match. I suggest starting as Toadette in time trial mode, in the bitty buggy, like I said with roller tires and paper glider, as she will build up mini turbos extremely quickly in this setup. As usual, time up your beginning starting boost, and then once you are just a little bit past the finish line, about even with this pillar here, perform an alignment hop to the right, followed quickly by a left drift. You will want to widen your drift angle at first and then tighten it as needed to avoid hitting the grass on the right hand side of the track, but make sure to widen it out again so that you are kind of heading for the corner of this square stone structure right here. Then, once you are about to go into the grass, start tilting the stick into hard drift position, in this case 90 degrees left. This will tighten your angle so you avoid that stone structure, and it will also let your mini turbo charge more quickly as I mentioned before. Keep holding that hard angle until you hear or see or feel your super mini turbo charge up, even if you were in the off-road, and keep in mind what you practiced before, you have a little bit of time before your turbos go away while drifting through off-road. So once you have charged up the super mini turbo, instantly release it. As you do this, you will probably need to alignment hop to the right once or twice, but this is okay because you'll want to be hopping through the grass anyway to build up your speed like I mentioned before. After a couple hops or maybe more, your cart should be on the ramp and your super mini turbo boost should still be boosting your cart, allowing you to gain top speed quickly enough to perform a trick off the top of the ramp uh, just as you would if you had a mushroom. Do so, but make sure you aren't aimed too far to the right or left. If you're aimed too far to the left, you are risking falling or hitting the wall, and you're just generally not taking the best line. So if you do miss, I advise missing to the right. Uh, that is, unless you miss way right, uh, that's bad. But if you don't miss too far right, you can just hop over this chunk of grass with a well-timed R button press, so it's no big deal. Once you have landed on the proper line and are all in the clear, just proceed as normal. You have officially performed a NIS. Uh, practice this, and do so until you're able to complete it with confidence. And once you feel that confidence, it's time to up the difficulty by trying it as Wario on the Wiggler. Fortunately, the technique is basically the same, we just have to be more precise and more careful, as if we aren't careful, we won't charge up a super mini turbo in time, or we may lose our mini turbo entirely in the off-road. Uh, I find that starting my first alignment hop to the right as early as possible helps here, but even I messed it up once or twice before settling into a rhythm. Uh, you know, it's been a while since I've tried this NISC as Wario on the Wiggler. Uh, but, but after just a few attempts, it comes back to you. The only other thing to mention here is how to handle this NISC when you are coming in from the second or third lap. Well again, the technique is basically the same regardless of character. In fact, I actually find it a bit easier, if anything, as I can use the starting line as a visual guide. As soon as I pass it, I begin my hop, then I enter into the left drift, uh, just like before. Basically, if you pulled this off when beginning lap one, you should be able to pull it off in laps two and three. Note how we utilize both alignment hopping and the fact that we can charge up mini turbos for a little bit in the off-road together to pull off this NITS. Without either one, we wouldn't be able to pull it off. The alignment hop is needed to have the proper angle, allowing us to both hit the ramp and charge our mini turbo for longer. Releasing the super mini turbo in the off-road is needed, because if we, say, just released a mini turbo right before hitting the off-road, we wouldn't have enough speed at the top of the ramp to get a trick, and we'd just fall to our doom. Uh, these two skills can be utilized in many ways, aside from this specific NISC. Uh, but we'll see that in later videos. For now though, that's all I have. Get out there and give this NISC a shot, and once you've mastered it in time trials, you'll be ready to uh, utilize it during races to gain an edge over your competition. Yeah, so get out there and practice, and, and, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next lesson.
Bye-bye.